Welcome to Fun Fun Function. Today we are talking about closure, more specifically the syntax of closure. I am doing this episode a wee bit hungover because yesterday was Halloween. I was at a party with a scary tales theme. This was my costume. Um, it's the uh, three bears from Goldilocks. So, why is it a good idea to explore other languages? We mostly use JavaScript on this show, but we don't want to learn JavaScript, we want to learn programming. And to do that, we need to explore and expand our horizons. There is a lot of cool things about Clojure, uh, but I want to focus on one little detail today, and that is the fact that Clojure has almost no syntax at all. Let's compare Clojure to JavaScript. This up here, this is valid JavaScript. It will evaluate to 6. Now, here is the same thing in Clojure. When I saw this for the first time, it made me go apeshit. Why is the plus on the left? This makes no sense! This is because what we are looking at is almost the entire Clojure syntax. Almost all Clojure looks like this. It's an open parenthesis. Parenthesis. Yeah. I am not a native English speaker, and that is a hard word. It's an open parenthesis, then an operator, and then as many operands as you like, and then a closing parenthesis. What? What does it mean? I'll show you some more examples, and you'll get it. Here is a variable declaration in JavaScript, and the same one in Clojure. We initialize the variable myFerret with the value waffles. In the closure example, we have our operator, death, most definitely, short for define, and then two operands follow, the variable myFerret and the variable value waffles. I'll show you a third example. If you look at the JavaScript here, we evaluate a boolean expression, and then if it is true, which it always is in this case, we return the uh, first statement after the question mark, you can have delicious soup, and then uh, if it's false, which it never is, we return the no soup for you string. In the closure code, it's the same bloody thing as the other examples. It's an open parenthesis, the operator if, and then followed by three operands. The first operand is the boolean being evaluated, always true, and the second operand is what we get if the boolean is true, which it always is. And the third operand is what we get if the boolean is false, which it never is in this example. So in Clojure, it's always operator, operand, 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 and close parentheses. And in Clojure, that is called a form. But where are my curly brackets? What if I want to do uh, multiple things in my if statement? Like this. If true is true, we should console log a message and then console log another message. Well, you do it the exact same way. So looking at this code, you are probably now recognizing Clojure as that language with all the fucking parentheses. But joking aside, I mean, look at how elegant this is. There is no new syntax introduced here. The only new thing that we've started to do is to nest forms. Let's go through it together. Our outer form starts with the operator if. After that comes our first operand, the boolean being evaluated, which is always true. And then comes another nested form with the operator do. And the operator do will simply, well, do all of the forms that is passed to it as operands, and that is these two print line forms. And that's it. Now you know 90% of the closure syntax. And it's pretty cool because most other languages have tons and tons of tons of uh, different language constructs, while in Clojure almost all functionality is enclosed in the operators and the simple form syntax. You have watched an episode of Fun Fun Function, a weekly show where we try to become more excited and confident about programming by exploring old wisdom, wild ideas, and having fun. 
This is a weekly show released on Mondays, but not next week because I am having a week off. So make sure that you follow me on Twitter at mpjme so that you don't miss out on that episode. Until next next Monday, stay curious. <laughs>